So this um, video going to look at again options, uh, option Greeks, and I'm going to con focus on uh, Tata. Uh, so run the Wikipedia page and just to get a definition, Tata measures the sensitivity of the value of the derivative to the passage of time. See uh, option time value. And what we have is okay. It's the it's actually time decay. So the option when we estimate the um, value of an option and increase the time period or the maturity of the contract, generally what we find is the value of the option increases. But theta is a measure of time decay. And so typically uh, for calls and puts, uh, long positions will have negative results, except where options are deep in the money. And we'll have a look at that as well. So if we go back to uh, a previous um, file, and I'll take it from the option Greeks. So it doesn't matter any of these files, in fact, uh, it's the same VBA and so on. I'm going to go on to Excel Online, which is on my OneDrive. Um, the VBA is not activated uh, on the OneDrive, so you have to download the file. And we're downloading Vega 2 here in this instance. And I've just opened up uh, that. Maybe pause while it's opening up. So it's opened up, enable editing, enable content, and just delete out the Vega stuff here because uh, we're interested mainly in Tata. And again, we might go into the developer tab here just to verify the code is in place. So um, we'll open this and double click on the folder and the module and the visual basic editor opens up and there's a tater for the call and tater for the put and they're different not the same this time and they're quite substantial in terms of um, references and overall relatively complex uh, formula um, so the screen here gets the bulk of um, the, the function, but this function should tally with the theta function here. Okay, so the representation here should be in line with the function here. Notice for VBA code, when the line is exceptionally long, if you underscore then the, and continue the next line, the function is read as one line. So where space becomes an issue, like here for instance, space is an issue and you can overcome that by going to the next line. But if you want the function to be read as, as being on the same line, then use the underscore. Okay, so we'll go back into uh, the spreadsheet and we want to work out uh, the theta for a call and we want to do it for a range of different um, option prices. Um, and we'll get rid of the and delete. Okay, so we'll start from fresh and Okay, what do we have? So we're looking at different stock prices. So again, 10, 20. And I should have put on the number lock. Okay, so 10, 20. And if you combine and drag, we'll get down to 200. And maybe we'll insert here just to make a little bit of space. Okay, and then 
what we have is we want the theta measure to come up. So we want to rerun this theta function. Theta being defined by this function here. So this theta function here is related back to the VBA code here. And we want to rerun that estimation to consider other values for s other than 100. So again, uh, go to the data tab, what if analysis data table, it's a column of data and the original input I want to change is the stock price. And so we've rerun, and again this is for data, and that's an analytic data. Okay, which is analytic. Okay, so, okay, we've estimated the theta. Maybe we should estimate the call as well, just to make the comparison. So, call option, and it's equal to same value. So, for these parameter inputs, for the call, call, the value of the option is 1045. And if we want to rerun uh, both estimates for the theta and for the call, again, same set of steps. Okay, and we could create a parallel. So we want to visualize what's going on here. Um, so just, we can, I suppose, put an equal sign drag over and we replicate the table, replicate the matrix of values and again this is theta and this is the call value. Okay, now um, let's, uh, let's have a look here. We could just graph like this and it becomes very simple. So insert and scatter. And what we have is that the theta is um, largely negative. Okay. And the reason why theta is negative, these values here are negative, is again a little bit counterintuitive because uh, we sometimes sometimes just assume that when we're working out the value of theta that it's dt dt divided by d sorry d lowercase d so the change in the call divided by the change in the time period the maturity but it's not actually the time period that's changing, it's the time that's passed. So we tend to use the formula for theta is lowercase t, meaning how much time has passed. Has one day passed? Has one month passed? What proportion of a year, where time is measured in years, uh, has passed? And so as the time period contracts, as t, lowercase t, increases, the time remaining on the contract falls. Um, okay, so, uh, okay, a couple of things here. Maybe we'll split up, just take the theta there, and we'll, okay, maybe we'll leave it as it is. Actually, it might be easier to see it as it is. A uh, couple of things. If we increase the time period, just concentrate on the red uh, black shoals call parabola. If we increase to five years, the tendency is for the option to increase in value. So this should rise particularly close to the exercise. Right? And when we we reduce the time period, let's say to six months, the value of the option contracts. However, this is not always in every in every case in every case going to apply 
if we go back to a previous video clip, so parameter sensitivities and download this file here, or open the link, let's see, no not that one, so go back This one. Yeah, for different time periods. What we observed before here was that as the time period increased, if you had, um, well, if we had zero for the different yield, let's try that. Okay, so it's not allowing me to just, let's just download that file. I'll pause. So, opening the file up. Different sigma, different um, uh, time periods, different maturities. If this, if, what we observe here is, if we increase the time period, we have different values for the option. The lower uh, maturity is consistent with a lower valuation, a lower black uh parabola. Uh, as we increase the time period, the value of the option tends to increase. But if we change the value of the option, that, that the dividend yield uh, in the option was zero, then this tapering that we have here uh, would no longer apply. And so it would be clear that when we increase the maturity of the option, that um, the value of the option seems to go up. As we raise the dividend yield, 3, 4, 5, we get a more um, precise, a more uh, clearer tapering that's occurring. Let's make this 10%. Okay, so here the option increases as we increase the time period, but then when we get deep in in the money, the value of the option actually begins to fall associated with the longer time period. Okay, so uh, that's why Tate is a little bit complicated because uh, for two instances, two reasons. One, it's time decay, but also uh, we have to be cognizant that, for instance, the Tate here could actually drift into positive territory here. So, for instance, if I change the dividend yield here to be, uh, let's put it to point 0.1, I would expect that there would be a range here in the negative when we're deep in the money, which becomes positive. And it does. And if I change it to 0 0.5, and when I change the dividend yield to 0 0.1, okay, and go back to 0. So what Tata is actually capturing it, capturing is time decay. It's also um, capturing the effect of maturity changes on the options and those can be both negative and val negative and positive. Typically positive but as dividend yield increases we're going to get negative and a negative, a reduction about the option is consistent with uh, a negative or a positive theta. Okay, 